So let's do a little bit of yoga together here this morning uh, virtually. So if you want to come right up to the front edge of your chair and notice if you tend to lean forward a little bit, see if you can lean back slightly in your seats, elevate and lengthen through your spine. And if it's comfortable for you to close your eyes this morning, I'll invite you to do that. And as you close your eyes, just allow your awareness to kind of come inside. So we are such visual creatures. Human beings are so visual that we are easily distracted by what we see, even if we're looking at a screen or a camera. And, and right now, maybe if you still have your eyes open, you're looking at me. Um, but the best way to kind of come into a, 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 the moment, to come into our, ourselves in this moment, is to actually close your eyes and get rid of that visual cue, whatever that visual cue is. And with your eyes closed, see if you can feel your hands. If your hands are resting on your legs, see if you can feel the contact between your hands and your legs. Maybe you can feel your skin if you're in short pants, <clears throat> or maybe you can feel your pants or your skirt or whatever it is that you're wearing this morning. And notice if you're feeling fabric, is the fabric soft or is it a little rough? Is it cool or is it warm? And if your hands are touching your skin on your legs, is your skin soft or is it a little dry? Is your skin warm or is it cool? Maybe you can feel a little um, uh, mole or a little scar or a little something on your legs. So we're just getting used to this sensation of touch without looking, right? So I can look and see my legs and I can look and see my pants, but it's a different experience to have my eyes closed and simply feel. And notice, do you have more sensitivity in your little fingers or your thumbs or some of your other fingers? And then turn your attention away from your hands and bring your awareness into your sitting bones, right where you're making contact with your chair. And see if you can feel your sitting bones where they're in touch with the chair. Is there more pressure on the left side or the right side? Can you feel the back part of your sitting bones, the front part of your sitting bones? And does that contact feel heavy or light? I'm gonna shift our physical awareness one more time from the sitting bones now to the feet, to the soles of the feet where they're in contact with the floor and if you're barefoot what does that feel like what is the texture of the floor underneath your feet if you're in your shoes or socks what is the texture of the inside of your shoes on the bottoms of your feet and for those who are barefoot can you feel the air as it moves across your toes across your arches the upper part of your foot to your ankle and for those who have shoes on, what's the temperature of your feet inside your shoes this morning? We don't often inquire about how the feet are feeling. And yet they do a whole lot of work throughout the day. And now let's draw attention away from the physical body and into the breath. What do you notice about the way that you're breathing right now? Maybe you're just becoming aware that you're breathing this morning. Maybe you hadn't paid any attention to your breath before this. And maybe just that awareness caused you to take a big breath in. And is your breath shallow? Is it deep? Is it fast or slow? What's the temperature of the air as you inhale and the temperature as you exhale?
And what do you smell in your home this morning? Maybe you smell your coffee or tea, or your breakfast. Maybe you had a shower and you can smell the lingering effects of that shower. Or maybe there's some other smells or aromas in your house this morning. It's all related to the breath. And now let's begin to deepen the breathing. As you inhale, see if you can fill your belly and the sides of your waist and all the way down into your lower back. So it's almost as if your body is like a balloon. It's an empty balloon just waiting to be filled. And just like that balloon, the air fills in three dimensions, right? So it's not just the belly or just the back or just the sides. It's all of those. As you inhale deeply, fill the belly, the sides of the waist and the low back. And as you exhale, feel how the air, that expansiveness that the air brings in, feel how that collapses a little bit. And now it might take several breaths for you to be able to really feel the sensation of expansion and contraction. And this is not readily available to us if we tend to breathe shallowly on a normal basis. It takes a little bit of practice. Conscious breathing is something that requires practice. Just like if you want to build strong muscles, you have to consistently lift weights and work out. In order to build conscious awareness of your breath, you have to consistently sit and do your breathing practice. And it's as simple as watching the breath moving in and out of your body and trying with each successive inhalation and exhalation to expand and lengthen those breaths. As you're breathing in and out deeply, pulling air into your belly and the sides of your waist and your low back, I'm going to ask you to add a mental count to your breathing. So breathe in and slowly count in your head to four. And breathe out and slowly count to four. Same thing. So we're breathing in and out to a slow mental count of four with each of those activities. Let's see if you can breathe in and out through your nose this morning. If you're having any difficulty breathing, you can try breathing in through your nose and out through pursed lips like you're gently blowing out a candle. Counting to four on the inhalations and counting to four on the exhalations. And now let go of the counting of the breath. And relax the conscious movement of the breath, going back to your natural inhalations and exhalations. So just allow the breath to move in and out of your body in whatever way it chooses. And just watch. Let's take in a breath together and let it out with a sigh. And then let your eyes gently open. 
Let's do a little bit of a stretch here. So take your hands from your lap, raise your arms up overhead, reach up and strengthen, stretch rather and lengthen through your body and then reach just the right one up and lean to that left side and breathe into the right side of your body and then go to the other side. So reach up through that left side and breathe into the left side of your body. And we'll go back and forth one more time on each side. So raising up through the right and then to the left. And then bringing the arms back down, take your hands and let's squeeze and extend the fingers. So get a little movement into the joints this morning. Notice how your joints feel this morning. Are they feeling pretty good or are they a little tight? Maybe you've got one or two that are talking to you. And then let's circle around at the wrists a little bit. And reverse direction and relax your shoulders as you're doing this too. Relax your jaw. Great. And then let's take the right arm, extend it out and have your elbow straight, have your hand a little lower than your shoulder. And we're gonna just pull back gently on the fingers. So see if you can get all four of those fingers and just pull back gently. So it kind of looks like that. So we're pulling back, breathing. Now, some of us are gonna feel this in the fingers. Some of us will feel it in the palms, the wrists, the, the um, forearm, maybe into the elbow a little bit. So it really all depends on where you're tight. Now, if your elbow is bent, you're not gonna feel this up into the arm. So I want you to really straighten that elbow as best you can and keep breathing. And then let's release that and circle that wrist around. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So left arm extended, fingers lifting up, and then we're gonna pull back on all those fingers, keeping that elbow nice and straight, breathing in, breathing out. Now notice, does it feel different on this side? Quite often it's gonna feel different on um, one side to the other. And it doesn't really matter which hand is more dominant and all of that. It's really about how your fingers and your hands and your arms kind of interplay. So maybe on this side, I've got a joint or two that's a little tight and it's giving me a little bit of a, a message this morning. Maybe it's more on the other side. And then let's release that and circle that around. We'll go back to the right hand and bring your hand so that your fingers are facing down toward the floor. And this time we're gonna press on the back of the hand, not on your fingers, but on the back of your hand. Keep that elbow straight. So if your elbow is bent, straighten that elbow out. Yeah, and we're gonna just pull back on this. Now watch that the shoulder doesn't come up around the ear too. So you wanna kind of release that down. And notice if you're holding your breath, Notice if you're clenching your jaw or tightening your neck. So oftentimes we'll do these things kind of unconsciously, um, especially when we're engaged in something that's a little uncomfortable, some sort of physical movement or stretch that's a little uncomfortable. And then we'll release that and circle that wrist around. Let's go to the other side. So left hand, fingers face down toward the floor and we're gonna just press gently on the back of that hand. Keep that elbow nice and straight. So if your elbow's a little bent, straighten it out. And you'll feel that notice if the shoulder's up around the neck, drop that shoulder down, taking some breaths. Great, and then we'll release that and circle that around a little bit. Good, now take the palms of your hands together and spread your fingers nice and wide and have your fingers, of course, touching one another here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep the heels of the hands together as well as the fingers. So from the heel of the hand down here all the way up to the fingertips, don't let those come apart. And we're gonna bring the hands down as low as they'll go, right? So as low as they'll go, you're aiming like toward your navel, right? So you're aiming really, really low with that. Breathe in and breathe out. Press your hands together really strongly here. And then as you're breathing in and out, we're gonna go all the way up, as high up as you can, bring your elbows as close together as they'll come. And then when we come down, we're gonna bring the elbows apart. So remember, keep the whole part of both hands together. Don't let the heels of your hands come apart. And we're just breathing in and breathing out. So one way you can think of this is as you go up, the elbows get closer. As you come down, the elbows get farther apart. Nice, slow movement. This is really effective if you press strongly into your hands. This is really effective for your shoulders, upper arms. Good, and we'll do just one more like this. One more time all the way up and down. 
Wonderful. Okay, and then release that and let's shake out the hands a little bit. Okay, now take your arms out to the sides at about shoulder height, maybe a little bit lower. Sit up nice and tall in your chair and reach out through the fingers of both hands. So we're really reaching out. And then we're just gonna bend and tap the shoulders. We're bending elbows, <clears throat> excuse me, tapping shoulders. Good, and keep the arms strong when you do this. In other words, these muscles right up here, your biceps muscles, you wanna keep those biceps muscles nice and strong by keeping your upper arms elevated so they stay parallel to the floor. Breathing in and breathing out. Next time you tap your shoulders, instead of going out to the sides, we're gonna go up overhead, press way up, and then come all the way down like you could tap your fingers on your shoulders, squeeze your shoulder blades together back there, bring your elbows back, and then we're gonna go all the way up. So we're gonna do this a few times. Breathing in and breathing out. As you go up, you're pressing up through the palms of your hands, and as you come down, you're squeezing the shoulder blades together, getting the elbows back there. Hmm. Couple more. Last one. Great, and then we're gonna go all the way out to the sides again like we started in. We're gonna put these two movements together. So as you're inhaling and exhaling, you're gonna bend your elbows, tap your shoulders, and then go up overhead and all the way down. So come out and extend and bend and up and breathe as you come down and extending and nice strong arms as you're doing this. So the movement you feel in the muscles of your arms, if you're only feeling the movement, if you're only feeling sensation in your joints, then you're not using your muscles to their greatest capacity. So what we really wanna do is use the muscles, get them nice and strong, good. And we're gonna go through this whole routine here just one more time. So one more time, we're gonna go out to the sides, breathing in, breathing out, bending the elbows, coming up overhead, and then squeezing, and we're gonna hold back here. So hold the shoulder blades squeezed together, hold the elbows like you could touch your elbows back behind you, press your chest forward, and tuck your chin toward your collarbones. Breathing in and breathing out. Press into the soles of your feet. And with your next exhalation, release your arms. Let's shake them out a little bit here. Okay, we're gonna do a little more arm work. So take that right elbow up and around and back and behind. So lift just as high as is comfortable for you. Now, when I say that, what I mean is, um, if you get to a place where there's some discomfort, go to that edge of discomfort but don't go to a place where there's pain, okay? So when I say within your comfort range, I don't mean necessarily that it's gonna be easy, but that it's not painful. And then let's see if we can extend the arm and get the whole arm up and around. And I like to do my arm circles really slowly because that gives me an opportunity to really notice where I have some limitations and where things feel pretty smooth. And we all, let me just say this, we all have some limitations in how we move our arms. If we were to get some sort of a tool to measure this, we would all find that we have a little bit of limitations. Next time the arm is down toward the floor, we're gonna reverse direction. And I say when the arm is down toward the floor, because that's the most stable position for your shoulder if you're gonna change direction. Now, some of us were moving backwards at first, some of us were moving forwards at first, so whatever, direction you were going in, you're doing the opposite now. And up and around, good. And then the next time your arm comes down in front, instead of continuing down, we're gonna bring it right across to the left and then we're gonna pull that arm over to the left using your left hand. Turn your head to the right as far as it'll go and lift and lower your chin like you're saying yes. A really slow motion yes. Breathing in and breathing out. Slow, gentle movement here for the neck. Good. 
great. And then we're going to turn the head back to center. We're going to release that arm, sweep it out to the side, bring it all the way behind your back as far as it'll go. Then take your left hand and grab hold of your right and pull over to the left a little bit. Now make sure you're not leaning to one side. You want to sit up nice and tall. And then we're just going to drop the left ear to the left shoulder and lift and breathe as you lower and lift. So again, it's just a really slow, gentle movement. And the next time that you have your left ear toward your left shoulder, stay here. See if you can bring that ear a little closer to the shoulder. Breathe in, breathe out. and slowly raise your head all the way up good let's release that right arm let's shake out both arms a little bit and then let them hang down by your sides and notice if your right arm feels a little longer than your left arm at this point maybe you have a little more length in the muscles a little more space in the joints over there so now we're going to take the left arm and starting with just a elbow circle kind of going up and around um, again, you might be starting forward, you might be starting backwards, slow and steady. So I don't know about you guys, but I notice a difference on this side. So this shoulder feels different than the other one. I was painting a ceiling over the weekend. Um, and if you've ever painted a ceiling, that's probably the worst painting job on the planet. Um, because it's very taxing on your neck and shoulders. And my right shoulder, my shoulder, this one here, um, really did most of the work, I can tell. And then let's reverse direction. Good, so the shoulder's cranky on me this morning. So we might actually do a little extra on this side. Okay, and then let's see if we can take the whole arm going up and around. So we're getting through that entire range of movements. Breathing in and breathing out. I haven't mentioned that um, for a few minutes here. So. Let's make sure the breath is smooth and stable. And then the next time that your arm is down toward the floor, that's a good time to reverse direction because the shoulder joint is stable um, and we're better able to make that switch without jeopardizing anything up in here. So a couple more rotations, a few more breaths. Good, and the next time that your arm comes to shoulder height in the front of your body, we're gonna take that arm and sweep it over to the right. Pull the arm across your body, turn and look out over your left shoulder, and with your head looking out over that left shoulder, just lift and lower your chin. So breathing in and breathing out, saying yes. Nice gentle movement here. Mm -hmm. And then bring your head back to center. We're gonna release that arm, sweep it around behind your back. See if you can reach back there, grab hold of the wrist or the hand or whatever you can get hold of and sit up nice and tall. And then we're gonna drop the right ear to the right shoulder and lift and lower. So let's just continue to do this. Breathing in, breathing out. So we're just bringing the ear to the shoulder. Don't lean your whole body now, it's just the Movement is happening just at the neck. So it might not be a very big movement at all, especially if you're tight. And the next time that you have your ear toward your shoulder, just hold here and breathe. Breathe deeply in and out and see if you can get that right ear a little closer to your right shoulder. And again, notice, does it feel different on this side? Is there more tightness or less tightness here? And with your next inhale, let's raise the head back up, release that arm. Let's take both arms out, shake them out a little bit. Let them hang down by your sides and let's check in. Hopefully the left arm and right arm are now the same length. Let's take a breath, let it out with a sigh. Good. And we're gonna switch gears. So extend your right leg, have your heel on the floor. So that means 
if you're not sitting right up at the front of your chair, you're going to want to scoot your backside up there so you can get that heel on the floor and sit up nice and tall. And then we're going to squeeze and extend the toes. Squeezing and extending the toes. So we're doing all kinds of work here with the toes. We don't often give our toes enough credit for what they do. Our toes are super important for balance. Um, and without our toes, especially that big toe, um, just the walking is like really impossible to do with a nice smooth gait because it's that, that movement through the toes, through the underside of the foot that actually propels you forward. And the big toe has a really important job with that. Okay, let's start to point and flex the foot. And as you lift your heel up off the floor, you might notice that your tendency is to lean forward or to bend forward a little bit. See if you can sit up nice and tall. And then start to circle at the ankle and reverse direction. And then heel comes back down to the floor. Now we're gonna do a little bit more work with the toes in a moment, but I wanna work on our knees a little bit here. So have your hands on the chair right alongside your hips. That just, um, that encourages you to sit up a little bit taller. It, for me, it reminds me, cause I tend to lean forward sometimes. Um, so this reminds me where I am in space. If my hands are way back here, I can say, oh, I realize that I'm leaning forward. So now pull your belly in a little bit and then pull your heel in toward your buttocks and then extend. So we're bending and extending at the knee. Now for any of you who've got issues with your knee, um, you might not get a big bend here and that's okay. Just do the best you can. Uh, for some of us, our knees are a little bit noisy um, and noise without pain is okay, generally. Um, uh, but if you're having any pain, you definitely don't want to be bending and extending quite so much. You can do a little bit less of a, a bend here. The next time that your knee is bent, bring your toes to the floor. And then slide or walk your toes underneath your chair a little bit more. Just kind of wiggle so you get back there. Now, for some of us, we're going to feel it up here in the thigh. Some of us are gonna feel it in the knee or the lower leg in the toes, right? In the underside of the toes, the bottom of the foot. So many places we can feel this. So what I'm gonna ask you to do now with your toes on the floor is try and bring your heel down toward the floor and then lift up on your tippy toes and bring your heel down toward the floor and lift up on your tippy toes and notice if you're breathing smoothly or if you've gotten back into that really shallow breath. See if you can deepen your breathing. Breathing in and breathing out and we're just lowering the heel and lifting the heel. Now some might not be feeling a whole lot with this. Some might be feeling much more. Um, for me, I'm feeling quite a bit on this side. I'm still recovering from a um, broken kneecap uh, six months ago. So I still have a lot of healing that needs to happen here. And these stretches, I've been doing these stretches every day. Um, they really make a difference. So just one more time, bringing the heel all the way down and then coming up on the tippy toes and then lean back slightly in your chair. Let's extend that leg, have the heel on the floor. Let's squeeze and release the toes a little bit here, just kind of wiggling them around. Okay, and then bend your knee, bring your foot to the floor, extend your other leg. So heel of the left foot is on the floor and now we're gonna squeeze and extend the toes on the left side. And again, I'm just gonna invite you to notice, what do you feel in your toes? What do you feel in your lower leg, right? So as we're squeezing and extending the toes down there, um, the, there's movement that's happening um, in the lower leg as well, because those muscles feed the muscles and the, uh, feed the tendons rather in your foot, and they work together with the muscles in your foot. So let's start to point and flex the foot. Notice as you're pointing and flexing, when you lift that heel, are you starting to slouch a little bit? See if you can sit up nice and tall, breathing in and breathing out. That's the most important part of this whole thing. And then circling around at the ankle and reversing direction. Good. And then let's bring that heel back down to the floor. Now, once again, kind of holding on to the sides of your chair a little bit here, reminding yourself to sit up nice and tall, pull your belly in and use your belly muscles for some added strength as we bend and extend this knee. 
right? So we're doing the same thing on this side. Notice if this side feels different. So sometimes we have just a slight difference from side to side, and for others, we have a pretty big difference. Breathing in and breathing out. Good, and the next time that you bend that knee, bring your toes down to the floor. So there's a little, you feel a little bit of a stretch on the bottom of your toes and on the bottom of your foot, and then kind of wiggle or slide that foot back until it gets underneath your chair, as far under as is comfortable. And then we're gonna press that heel to the floor, toward the floor, and then come up on tippy toes and press the heel to the floor come up on tippy toes so we're doing the same thing on this side that we did on the other we're just lifting and lowering that heel breathing in and breathing out relaxing the breath relaxing the body so if you're gripping your chair or you're tightening your shoulders see if you can relax all of that and once again just as on the other side some of us might be feeling this up here in the thigh or around the knee the lower leg the foot there's all kinds of places we might be feeling it two more times doing this and then let's press that heel toward the floor see if you can hold there just for a breath good and then we're just going to relax that lean back extend that leg bring the foot to the floor let's squeeze and extend those toes just kind of wiggle them around a little bit here okay and then bend that knee and bring your foot to the floor so we're going to return to the toes so we're getting very specific here with our toes so look down at your feet look at your big toes and compare them do they look the same i know there's some subtle differences for sure maybe there are some greater differences there and then just compare your other toes do all your toes kind of look the same on the left and on the right or are there differences there so you might have a hammer toe somewhere you might have a corn somewhere maybe you've got um, uh, a toenail issue on one of them um, any number of things right so we're just kind of noticing the differences and the similarities in the feet okay now keeping the balls of your feet on the floor and by the way the balls of your feet are right here it's where your toes kind of sprout out from your foot so we're going to keep the whole foot from here all the way to the heel on the floor and we're just going to lift all the toes and then lower them down so you can look at them or you can choose not to look at them so as you're lifting and lowering your toes if you're looking at your feet i want you to compare do all your toes lift in the same fashion or do you have some toes that when they lift they kind of go off to the side a little bit or maybe they lift a little higher maybe they ride on the toe next to them in other words they're hitching a ride on the toe next okay now raise all of your toes and hold them up there and let's breathe so with all of your toes lifted keep all toes lifted and we're going to take just the big toes and press just the big toes down but keep all the other toes lifted and then lift and lower just the big toes so we're working just those big toes remember what i said a few minutes ago about the big toes being particularly important in walking because it's your big toe that pushes off when you're taking your next step and that push off goes all the way up the back of your body right through your arch through your heel, through your um, lower leg your upper leg right into your buttocks so we're pressing and lifting just the big toes and we've got all the other toes still lifted okay lift all the toes and then place them all back down relax your feet for a moment now if you haven't taken a full deep breath now is the time to do it breathing in and breathing out okay so now lift all your toes again spread them nice and wide if you can keep your big toes lifted and press all of the other toes down and then lift all the toes keep the big toes lifted press all of the other toes down lift everything up and we're going to continue with this so breathe in and breathe out and the big toes stay lifted but now all the other toes are lowering and lifting so we're getting that same experience that we had with the big toe and we're doing it with all those little toes notice how they work on the left side and on the right side do they work in a similar fashion or is there some difference there 
is there sensation on one side that's not on the other side? And then lift them all up, lift, 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 and then lower all the toes down, relax your feet for a moment. Let's go back and take a nice deep breath in and out. Once again, just kind of noticing. We tend to, when we're doing something really specific, and this toe work is really specific work, what tends to happen is we go into our, um, uh, what I call rabbit breath, right? So you know how a bunny rabbit, when it's in the wild, um, if it senses prey in the area, the bunny rabbit will start to breathe really shallowly so that the other animal can't hear it. And that's what we do when we're focusing on something really specific like this, we go into that bunny rabbit breathing. So it's very shallow and we're not even aware that we're doing it. It's almost like we're trying to listen for what's happening in the, in the feet. Okay, so now that you've taken a couple of deep breaths, we're gonna lift all the toes again, lift them all up, spread them nice and wide, and see if you can press just your big toes down and just your baby toes down, but not the ones in the middle. Oof. And then lift everything back up. And once again, just the big toes, just the baby toes, but not the ones in the middle. And lift, and we'll do that a couple more times. So you're just pressing your big toes and your baby toes down and you're keeping all the middle ones lifted and notice if you haven't taken a full deep breath, right? So this is where we really get into that shallow breathing because this is hard. This takes a lot of concentration as well as some dexterity in the toes to be able to do that. Let's see if we can do this just one more time and we're gonna hold here all together. The interesting thing here doing a virtual class is I can't see your toes out there, most of you. So whatever's happening over there, it's happening in the privacy of your own home. Breathing in and breathing out, let's release all of that. Good, now bring your feet underneath just a little bit and we're gonna come up on the toes and then bring the heels down. So this is how we're just kind of getting those toes back to where they need to be. Okay, great. Okay, so bring your feet out a little bit so your feet are under your knees. We're gonna scoot over to the right side of the chair so that your right cheek is kind of hanging off the edge and you're gonna wanna hold on to your chair with your left hand so that we um, uh, you know, stay seated and comfortable here. We're gonna take that right leg, now use your heel and your toes and walk the leg out, but don't turn your body, right? So your body stays facing forward and then we're gonna come forward. So we're just, it's just a little inchworm walk of the foot out and in, All right? Breathing in and breathing out, or breathing out and breathing in, however you wanna start your whole conscious breathing is completely up to you. And the next time that you walk your foot out, we're gonna hold it out there. Hold it out there. Now notice how far out your leg comes, right? So is there like, do you have like a 90 degree angle when you look between your um, right knee and your left knee? Or do you have a little bit less of an angle? Do you have a little bit more of an angle? Let's see if we, if we can walk that out just a little bit more. Good. Okay, now keep it out there and use your toes to extend your legs. So now you're really inchworming that foot out. So inchworm out, straighten the leg, and then use your toes and let's bring it back. A little bit of dexterity in the toes there. And one more time, we're gonna walk the, leg, uh, walk the foot out. So we're straightening the leg. And when we get the leg straightened, we're gonna stay here. Now, see if you can have your heel on the floor, but lift your toes up toward the ceiling. And then in order to do that, you need to engage the muscles here in the top part of your leg, your thigh muscles or your quadriceps muscles here. Those are the muscles on the front of your leg. We're gonna take the right hand down the inside of that right thigh. Make sure you're not drifting with your torso this way. We're gonna keep going this way. And then we're gonna lean into that right side as you slide your hand down your leg and then come all the way back up, right? So this is the whole movement. We're leaning into that right side and coming back up. If you're comfortable, as you lean to the right, you can take your left arm up overhead 
and then come all the way back down. So you just wanna make sure you have enough purchase on your chair that you don't fall off or don't feel like you might fall off. And if this is bothering your shoulder at all, you can just keep your hand down on your hip or you can have it on your chair. So two more times, we're gonna lean into that side and come back up and lean into that side and come back up, great. Okay, so now from here, we're gonna point the toes. That means bring the toes down toward the floor as best you can. Some of us are gonna get the toes right down on the floor and some of us are just gonna be reaching in that direction. So it doesn't matter, the goal is not to get your toes on the floor, the goal is to be pointing your toes toward the floor. Take your left hand to the left side of your chair and now we're gonna lean into the left side, keep reaching out through your toes and then come all the way up. So you can see we're bending that left elbow as we lean into the left side. And if this feels okay for you, as you lean into the left side, take your right arm up overhead and then come all the way back. Now breathe, breathing in and breathing out. It doesn't matter when you inhale and when you exhale, as long as you have a smoothness to your breath. So the breath, breath should be nice and smooth as you lean to one side. Two more times, we're gonna lean to that left side. Good, and last time, leaning out to that left side. Great, and then come all the way back up. Beautiful. Now, give that knee a little bit of a bend. Use your toes and your heel. We're gonna walk the foot in just a little bit. Stay on the right side of your chair though. Stay right there on the right side of your chair. Once your foot gets in slightly, now we're gonna lean a little more into the left hip and we're gonna lift that right foot up and see if you can circle around using your hip, right? Now, see if you can keep your torso up nice and tall. You can use your left hand to support you here. Breathe in, breathe out. And at some point, reverse the direction of those hip circles. And same thing with the hip that I said with the knee. You might have a little noise in there. And noise without pain is generally fine. Uh, if you have some pain, um, you definitely wanna stop with that. Okay, and the next time that your foot comes down toward the floor, let's place it down there and then scoot your backside over to the middle of your chair take your right leg, cross it over your left. If you can cross knee on top of knee, that's what we're gonna do. If it's not comfortable for you or um, contraindicated for you to cross your knee on top of your knee, you can cross ankle on top of ankle. So I'm gonna do this side demonstrating the knee on top of the knee. Push your inner thighs together. So squeeze your inner thighs together here and see if you can sit up nice and tall. And then we're gonna lean forward as we're squeezing the thighs together. See if you can lean forward like you're trying to bring your navel down onto your knee and then come all the way back up. So breathing in and breathing out, we're just coming forward and going back up. Couple more of these. Nice, full, deep breaths in and out. Slow, steady movement. Keep squeezing the thighs together, squeezing those inner thighs together. Last one and all the way up, beautiful. And now we're gonna slide this leg so that we have the ankle crossed on top of the knee. Once again, if this doesn't work for you, um, you can always have your ankle crossed on top of your ankle, okay? So I'm gonna demonstrate again, this ankle on top of knee situation. And what can be helpful is if you just hold on to your shin, that's right there. And as you hold on to your shin, just kind of pull back a little bit and you'll see how that pulls your spine up and it pulls your chest forward a bit. So breathe in and breathe out. Now, if this is enough of a stretch right here, so let me just say this, hip, thigh, knee, leg, even into the lower back and around to your buttocks, um, these are all areas that you may be feeling the stretch on this side. So if it's sufficient, if the stretch is sufficient here, stay right where you are. If you think you could use a little bit deeper stretch, you can hinge forward just a bit from your hips. Again, like you're trying to bring your navel down onto your leg. Now, here's how I can tell if I'm going too far. If I push forward a little too far, it gets really hard to breathe smoothly. So I know I need to come back a little bit. 
Now for me, I don't have very much range coming forward on this side right now. So I'm just working with a very minor, minor movement forward. You might not even be able to tell that I've leaned forward at all. I'm breathing in and breathing out. And we're just gonna hold here as we continue to breathe. Now notice if you're feeling a lot of sensation in that hip or the leg somewhere uh, in this area that I was just describing, you may be clenching your hands. You may be clenching your neck or your jaw. See if you can relax that. Investigate, are you trying to transfer that tension, that, that uh, potential energy somewhere else in your body? Let's take two more really full deep breaths in and out. and then really slowly come all the way back up. Great. Okay, let's lean back slightly. We're gonna uncross that leg, bring the heel down to the floor, and then let's extend the other leg. Point your toes and look down. See if you see a difference in the length of your legs. So is one leg longer than the other? Hopefully it's the right leg that's a little bit longer than the left leg at this point. Okay, and then let's bend the knees, bring your feet in and scoot your backside over to the left side of your chair. So you kind of you've got that left cheek hanging off a little bit. Right cheek is on there nice and solid and you can take your right hand to your chair. And then we're just gonna use the heel and the toes and walk that foot out and walk it back. Now, notice if your body starts to want to drift in that right direction or sorry, left direction. So we want to keep the body facing forward and we're just using the foot, the ankle, the flexibility, the, the mobility rather in the ankle to kind of get the leg out there. And the next time that your leg comes all the way out to the side, let's hold here. And then we're going to use the toes like a little inchworm and scoot that foot across the floor till your leg straightens. And once your leg straightens, then scoot that foot, heel and toe bending the knee. So this is just developing a little dexterity in the bottom of your foot and the bottom of your toes. And once again, scoot that foot out. A little bit of a inchwormy thing going on here. When your leg gets extended, have your heel on the floor, raise your toes up toward the ceiling and really tighten up these leg muscles right here, the thigh muscle. Now, if you're leaning, see if you can sit up nice and tall. Take your left hand down your left thigh and we're just gonna lean to the left and come back up. So we're gonna breathe in and breathe out. Doesn't matter when you inhale, when you exhale. Slow, gentle movement. If you'd like to add the right arm, as you come over to the left, take your right arm up overhead and then all the way down. Good, yeah. And raise your arm just as high as feels comfortable again. So it might be a little uncomfortable, right? So it's like, oh, I haven't raised my arm up over my head like this for a while. So there's a little discomfort there, but never pain, right? So we definitely don't want to feel any pain in that shoulder. So let's do this just two more times. Breathing in and breathing out. Again, that is the single most important thing is the breathing in and the breathing out. And last time. So we're coming all the way over. Great. Excellent. And now let's bring that right hand to the chair and point your toes on the left. So that means trying to bring the toes to the floor. So you might, your toes might actually make it to the floor or they might just kind of point in that direction. And then we're gonna lean into the right side as we bend the right elbow and then come all the way up. So leaning into the right side and coming back up. And if you'd like, you can add your left arm. So only if it feels comfortable, take that left arm up and overhead. Nice, slow movement. Nice, easy breath in and out. Let's do like three more of these. And two more of these. Hmm. And last one. Beautiful. Okay, and then give that left knee a little bit of a bend. Use your heel and your toes. We're gonna walk that foot back around. Stay on the edge of your chair though. Don't come to the middle yet. So stay right on the edge of your chair and then we're gonna lift that leg up 
and circle around at the hip, right? So breathe in, breathe out. Notice is this hip um, noisier, less noisy? Do you have more range, less range? And at some point, reverse direction. So you're using your belly muscles too, nice and strong in the belly. Good. Just two more circles. And last one. And then we're gonna bring that foot to the floor and now scoot over to the center of your chair and take your left leg, cross it on top of your right. So this, um, again, you can do knee on top of knee or ankle on top of ankle. I'm gonna demonstrate the ankle version of this on this side. So we're gonna squeeze those inner thighs together, really pulling the inner thighs together as best you can. Sit up nice and tall in your chair. Take a deep breath in and as you exhale, come forward like you're trying to bring your navel down onto your knees and lift and come forward. So we're just gonna breathe in and out. We're squeezing inner thighs together, keeping the spine nice and long. Good. Just a couple more of these. Great. And next time we come all the way back up, we're gonna pause here. Great. Now, if you're crossing knee on top of knee, uh, you're gonna slide your ankle to the top of your knee. If this doesn't work for you on this side, you can have the ankle crossed at the ankle, but now instead of pulling the knees together, we're just gonna let them kind of be apart here. So breathe in and breathe out, sit up nice and tall. You can have, if you're crossed at your um, knee, you can have both hands on that shin in the front. If you're crossed at your ankle, you can just have both hands on this side. Now notice what you're feeling in this side. It can be anywhere from like the hip all the way down to the knee and even into the foot. You might be feeling a little bit of a stretch. If this isn't enough of a stretch for you and you want a little bit more, you can hinge forward from the hips like you're trying to bring your navel down onto your knee, coming forward, breathing in and breathing out. So when you get as far forward as is comfortable on this side, you get maybe a little discomfort somewhere in the, in the um, this side of the body. Just gonna hold here and breathe. Let's take two more breaths. and then come all the way up. Great, lean back a little bit. Let's uncross the legs, extend them out, point your toes and notice if your legs are once again, the same length. Hopefully the answer to that is yes. Okay, so let's bend the knees a little bit. And now if you'd like to sit back into your chair, you can do that. If you want to stay up near the front edge of your chair, you can do that as well. We're going to close with a little bit of a meditation. Um, so in meditation, in the kind of meditation that we're doing here, there's, it's kind of a big word. Meditation is a big word. People use it to describe a whole lot of um, different techniques. So let me say that. Meditation is sometimes used universally to describe techniques, but meditation itself is sort of the same goal. We, we kind of get to the same place, which is to become the witness of what's happening, right? To observe what's happening. So that means shutting off the sensory input, so shutting the eyes. It means not reacting to sound, right? So we live in, uh, uh, we don't live in the mountains, so it's noisy. We live in a noisy place. So not responding or not reacting to the sounds that are out there or being distracted by the sounds out there. That's what our meditation um, uh, goal is. Now, how we get there, the, the methods that we use are, there's so many different methods and not every method works equally well for everybody. Um, so what I like to do is sort of give you a, a variety of different things that you might be able to use. And one of the ones that we do quite often is a meditation on breath, where we simply watch the breath moving in and moving out. There's another nice meditation technique called mantra meditation. Now the word mantra, it's just a, 
Mantra is a phrase that um, you repeat over and over and over in your head. Um, it might be a couple of words, it might be a verse from a song or a piece of a poem, it might be a part of a prayer that you particularly like. So it doesn't really matter what mantra you choose, as long as it's something that can sort of, it has a lyrical or a rhythmic kind of flow to it. So one of the mantras that I like to use is just the, the, the phrase, I am. I am. So it doesn't have any religious affiliation. It doesn't have any um, uh, visualization kind of thing. It's just that I'm repeating that I am. It doesn't matter I am what, it's just I am. So if you'd like to use that, I'll, uh, I'll offer that up to use that as your mantra today. Again, if you have like a little piece of a poem or a prayer or something that you like to use in your, in your own daily meditation, um, you might do that now. So relaxing your body, I'm just gonna ask you to close your eyes. So let's shut that visual gate. Let's just close that visual gate for a moment. Relax into a steady rhythm of your breath. You don't have to deepen it. You don't have to change it. You just want it to be your natural breath. And then start to repeat in your mind your mantra. So if it's a mantra you choose, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, you can just repeat, I am, as you breathe in and as you breathe out. Now let go of your mantra, that little phrase that you've been repeating. Take a full breath in and let it out with a sigh. <sighs> and then take your hands together for a moment and an expression of gratitude. Maybe just take a moment to acknowledge all the gifts that you've been given in your life all the things that you've worked hard for, everything that you've achieved, and for the gift of being here together this morning. So thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your day.